Over the past year, Americans have seen the Federal Reserve slowly lower their aim for the economy. We started out shooting for the stars. Inflation? Pfft, that's transitory. Let's keep this gravy train going. Now if they were aiming any lower, they'd be shooting themselves in the foot. So what am I talking about? Well, the Federal Reserve just lowered their ambition from soft landing to growth recession. Uh oh, there's that R word kicking in. Now on a scale of stuff you don't want to see, this is up there with the cheerleaders abandoning hope and starting to root for the other team. So what are all these terms that I'm starting to throw out? We got soft landing, growth recession, it all just sort of sounds like I went to a PR firm and asked them to come up with the best names for slowing growth. So first term you're going to be hearing a lot today, the legendary soft landing. Now this is the ultimate measure of a Federal Reserve Chair's chops. Alright, so you got a supercharged economy that is just off the charts succeeding. All the arrows are just steep cliffs pointing up to the sky. Great! Problem is, when all the arrows are pointing up, well that includes inflation. People start throwing around a bit more money than they used to, treating themselves a bit, and what do you know, suddenly everyone's bidding up the prices of different items. Prices, well they respond by going up. That, well that's a problem for the Federal Reserve. Enter Jerome Bowell and his guys. Now they are sitting there at the helm watching inflation numbers start to tick up a bit higher and higher and they are thinking to themselves, maybe we tap on the brakes a little bit, raise interest rates and just get us back from off the charts growth to on the charts growth. Now if you could do this properly, no one will ever remember your name and I certainly wouldn't be making a video about you. This fabled anti-inflation transition from a hot economy to a lukewarm economy is called the soft landing, as I mentioned earlier. You get to fight inflation while maintaining all the economic and employment gains that you got from that smoking hot economy of yesterday. Then a few days down the line once inflation is back to normal, you start easing the brakes again and go back up the growth ladder. Great target for the Federal Reserve. Unfortunately, while Jerome Powell is now lowering his scope a bit to the oxymoronic growth recession target instead. Alright, slowing down our forward momentum isn't killing inflation. Let's just keep tapping on those brakes and ideally once things come to its complete halt, inflation will eventually fall back to a reasonable number. Now of course the idea of a growth recession sounds pretty deceptive on paper. We're going to keep going through a period of shrinking economics while growing. Eh, don't worry, I had the Enron guys run the numbers and it all checks out. Now, Luckily, the Federal Reserve provided us a definition that is a bit more constructive than just me riffing. Our new goal is to just sort of stagnate. In Powell's words, a growth recession is a protected period of meager growth and rising unemployment. A situation where the economy expands more slowly than its roughly 1.5 to 2% long term trend, but an outward contraction is avoided. Now, this downgrading Federal Reserve targets is a bit more significant than just sort of providing a pessimistic economic story. It instead represents a change of economic strategy for the Federal Reserve. We went from tapping the brakes to fully engaging the e brake. So initially, Jerome Powell's plan was just to blitz inflation. Usually the Federal Reserve tweaks interest rates by quarters of a percentage point, but Powell's Fed, in coordination with the European Central Bank and other major central banks, raised things by three times what that normal amount would be, by doing a three quarter basis point hike. Now the goal here was a show of force. If people don't start acting more responsible with their money, we're going to turn this whole economy around. Now that show of force was met entirely with indifference by everyone. Seeing everyone ignore him, Jerome Powell puffed out his chest and expressed his commitment to fighting inflation a few times. And then people just sort of shrugged and kept doing what they were going to do. Inflation numbers didn't really do much. So now central bankers are looking at each other and saying, wait, 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 do, do you think we're actually going to have to pull this thing over? 
Today's Federal Reserve has pretty much given up hope of a quick inflation victory and is settling in for a longer and more brutal campaign of fighting inflation by shrinkage. Jerome Powell is keeping his eyes on two factors that he thinks are keeping inflation numbers so sticky, consumer demand and employment. Now these days there are just too many people having jobs and wanting to buy things, a problem that sounds like it might not need solving. Now this next part is going to be incredibly controversial in the comment section, so let's all remember to not shoot the messenger, okay? The first long term inflation problem identified by Jerome Powell is labor market mismatches. You see, there's a lot more demand for workers right now than there are a supply of workers. Now what this means is that if you want to fill all your positions, you need to offer employees more money, which increases costs, which pushes up prices, also known as inflation. As Bloomberg put it, Jerome Powell said that the labor market was clearly out of balance, with the demand for workers substantially exceeding the supply. Now that's led to rapid wage rises that are incompatible with the Federal Reserve's 2% inflation target. Reducing inflation is likely to require a sustained period of below trend growth. Moreover, there will be very likely some softening of the labor market conditions, widely seen as a euphemism for higher unemployment. Now, in case you thought in that intro portion of this last part, I was just doing a caricature of an evil person, nope. Stick a bunch of bankers in Jackson Hole for a few days and you get Lord of the Flies. So alright, step one of fighting inflation, reduce demand for labor so that employers don't have to pay their employees as much. This will definitely lower costs and hopefully some of those savings will go back to the consumers. Now the other problem that Jerome Powell pointed out is consumer demand. We just want so much and we're willing to pay so much for it. That leads to inflation. Now this also driving up prices. Higher interest rates will slow economic activity and growth by making borrowing more expensive. Slower growth leaves consumers with less to spend and on top of that makes businesses more apt to fire than hire which in this case I guess is a good thing. The hope is that reducing consumer demand will slow price increases while weakening demand for labor and will keep wages from going up at a pace likely to feed inflation. Look, we can kill two birds with one stone in this case, less spending and getting people fired. So glad I finally found something that the government can efficiently accomplish. Now long story short of this whole episode. The Federal Reserve is slowly coming to the realization that oh man, there is not going to be a quick solution to this inflation problem. Instead, this is really going to have to be a prolonged targeting of America's employment and on top of that consumer spending, with the goal of reducing both of those categories. Now, I once read that the worst feeling in the world is being smart enough to realize that everyone's doing something wrong, but not smart enough to think of a better alternative solution. And I can tell you, I relate to that very much right now. Thank you, and that's almost all I have to say about that, but I have a few episode pitches that I'd love to hear your opinions on. This episode inspired a few potential future episodes in my head. First. How bad is inflation anyways? I mean I know I've covered abysmal central bank inflationary actions in Turkey and Argentina, but it's less in these episodes about the inflation itself and more about central bank policy. Right now it seems to be inflation bad, let's burn it all down to kill it. It might be interesting to dig into that a bit, let me know if you'd like to see that episode in the comments. Similarly, are there alternative methods of reducing inflation that might be less intrusive? Now a spoiler alert right off the bat, the solutions that I've come across in researching this episode all involve congressional action, so right off the bat not great. One strategy involves soaking up excess cash through several means, like increasing taxes, soaking up some of that money's supply through collections, 
and selling additional long-term government debt. Also to soak up money supply because hey, you get this piece of paper promising money in 10 years and we get to lock up your money for the next 10 years, reducing money supply. Another is focused on having windfall profit taxes also known as additional profits that corporations reap by raising their prices more than the amounts of their costs going up, generating additional profits and inflation. Now lastly, you have plans that are sort of designed to decrease costs, for example some sort of subsidy, a price cap, or building in additional efficiencies and establishing economies of scale for buying things. Now this is how the Inflation Reduction Act claims to be inflation reducing. So I guess, huh, maybe I just made that episode. Let me know if you want to hear more about it in the comments. Thank you, and with that all said, that's actually all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.